Okay, so now we have Conformalizer version 3. I thought I'd just give you a quick rundown of some of the new features. Uh, first of all, you can probably see already the, uh, the GUI itself is smaller. Uh, buttons are smaller, text is smaller, basically just takes up less, less uh, real estate on your screen. Uh, we've got some new shortcuts. Um, import old list, option Apple 1, and I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, import new list, option Apple 2. You don't even have to tab to the, to the, uh, to the new page. Option Apple 2. Great. And what else have we got in there? I've got some other shortcuts I'll get to in a minute. Um, okay, so the first thing you'll notice when you compare is the blue events. Uh, now you're familiar with the red events, which are the VFX updates. Blue events are the ones that, I'll click one here, blue events are the ones that have a gap preceding them. So any event which, um, which doesn't have an event immediately preceding it will show here as a gap and will show here as a, as a blue event. So you can quickly run through the blue events, check them out, roll backwards, see if you can make the event any better, pull out the head, whatever. Um, movie view, you'll notice up here, uh, we used to have the offset field. Uh, that's been removed. We've now got the movie start timecode field and a little hour nudge button next to each of those. Um, the basic idea is that we used to have problems with movies longer than an hour and that, uh, for example, this time code here, 1 hour 624, that would locate the picture to 6, 24, 6 seconds 24 frames, as you'd expect. But this time code, 2 hours 624, would do exactly the same thing. The movies were hour ignorant. Uh, they didn't care which hour code they were in. And obviously that's a problem when you've got long movies or a long cut. Um, pictures weren't located to the right places. So now what we do is we assign a specific start time to each movie uh, and that can be ascertained in a couple of ways. Uh, first of all, Conformalizer will check if you've used that movie before and if you've previously set a time code for it, it'll go ahead and use that. Uh, secondly, if it can't find one of those, it'll try to find a time code track from the QuickTime, uh, which to be honest aren't there most of the time, but if it can find time code there, it'll use that. If not, it'll leave it as it says here, no timecode set. And in this mode, it'll behave just as previous versions of Conformalizer did. Um, it'll be hour code independent, uh, but it will continue to function as if the picture starts exactly on the hour. Uh, I'll bring a picture in and give you an idea. Uh, this one here. Okay. Uh, now what we see is I've got a picture which starts at 59.59, one second before the hour. It's come in without a time code, which means I've never used this file before. I've never given it a time code. Um, Conformalizer can't find a time code in the QuickTime time code track. Uh, so it's just left it <clears throat> just as the old version two and version one Conformalizer would have. So my options are either go to the first frame and manually type in this number here, 59.59.00, um, or I can find the zero point, which is uh, the first, I guess the first point at which we find a whole numbered hour. So in this case, hour one. And uh, you know, most most movies are going to have <clears throat> one hour, two hour, three hour, somewhere near the start of the file. So we find that point, remembering to use our arrow keys to make sure we're right on a frame boundary. Uh, and then we capture that point as the zero point of the file. So capture old movie zero point, snap. And what it's done is wound backwards to the start of, of the quick time and figured out what that point would be. And sure enough, the start time of our file is 59.59. Great. So this is the other big advantage of, of, of uh, using a start time rather than an offset. Um, it means we can get right down to, to frames, even if your quick time starts at some ridiculous point, 41, 27, 03, doesn't matter. As long as you can find that zero point and capture it, you're fine. Uh, okay, let's pull in the other one. So there's the other movie. So now clicking on these events will prove that they sync. Yeah, that's all good. Um, 
Uh, I think that's it for movies. Oh, nudge. We can nudge each of these uh, times up and down uh, by a whole hour using these small arrow up and down buttons. Uh, and what you'll notice immediately is that the time turns red. Uh, and what that means is that the selected event is outside the range of the quick time going by this start time here. Um, now that will be caused either by nudging this one up or down, having the wrong quick time in there with the, you know, the wrong time code assigned, or selecting an event which is outside the range of that particular quick time. So if you've got a big rebalance going on with several reels of material, um, you'll find as you're scrolling through the list it'll turn red, go get the appropriate quick time and move on. Cool. Uh, and this, this time once it's set, <coughs> 3.59.59.00 let's say that was the time we wanted if I pull on another movie I'll pull on this one here see it changes to one hour which is the last time it was saved go back to the original one that's remembered 3.59.59 great okay uh, undos we have some undos now um, deleting event can be undone hooray um, editing a time is undoable and nudging things around undoes great oh new events undo hooray uh, okay setup panel has some new stuff oh yeah uh, one hour reels or continuous mode this applies to PAL film projects only at this stage um, it's there because PAL film, pro PAL film projects uh, start as 25 frame fast EDLs. Uh, Conformalizer now converts these to 24 frame film speed on importing. Um, and in combination with this new feature, it means that PAL film projects can now be longer than one hour, which is great. Um, if you're working in reels, then have it set that way. If you're working long form PAL film, switch it that way. Has no effect to any mode except PAL film. Coolio. Uh, find. This is very cool. Select an event, Apple F, find selected event in other files. Um, I'll use a better example for you on this one. Okay, uh, if I take this cut list here, okay, sorry, I was in NTSC, and I select Let's say I select, well, let's just select um, this range here. Let's say there's a, a bunch of shots which have suddenly come back from a previous cut and uh, I need to go and figure out where they came from, what was the last version we saw them in. Um, edit uh, events, find selected events in other files, Apple F. Now this basically asks for a group of files. You point it at a folder um, and it scans, there we go, it's done it already, it scans every file within uh, to try and figure out if these shots have appeared somewhere else before and then gives you a list of um, the files in which these events appeared and orders it according to which is uh, most relevant. So in this case we have 3 version 12 and 3 version 13 both seem to have that same setup. 3 version 10 and 3 version 11 had some some version of that scene. Cool, so um, we can now go and find those files and figure out which is the best conform really handy. Uh, keyboard shortcuts, I've showed you um, import old list, import new list, oh and control command one, uh, control command one, watch the time here, there, control command one and control command two, uh, capture, it's this, this one here, capture old movie zero point. So it's handy, I guess, if you've got movies with no time code tracks, you load it, first thing you do is go control command one and it snaps this point as, uh, as one hour. You can push it around, do what you need. Cool, uh, what else we got? Autoconform. Uh, the autoconform routine has been completely rebuilt. Um, much faster, much smoother, doesn't get uh, Pro Tools confused. Um, yeah, and just generally a lot more robust and uh, and and faster. Yeah, excellent. All right, that's it. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Email me support at maggot.co.nz. Sweet as.